All right, here we go. Mike Manzi. A lot of people have been asking for this for so long now. The Caillou Predator, this the Egghead Predator, whatever you want to call him. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have been asking for this one, and this is probably going to be a disappointment. <laughs> but so many people have asked for this, so I'm just going to just do it. I was considering just doing like a sarcastic <laughs> review of Mike Manzi just to kind of troll people, but fuck it, we'll do it, we'll do it. But yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess it means that I'm susceptible to, <laughs> to peer pressure, right? Because um, I, I was not going to do this, but so many people were asking for it, so fuck it, I'm just going to do it. But Mike Manzi is a unique case when it comes to To Catch a Predator slash Hanson vs. Predators. Plenty of Predators were never featured on TCAP despite being charged. Mike Manzi was featured despite him not being charged with a sexual crime. And that is a little bit of a gray area because there are some people who believe that Mike Manzi should not have been featured on this and I, compl I think it's bullshit. I think he should have been featured. He was right to be, they were right to feature him because even though he wasn't charged with a sex crime because they couldn't charge him with a sex crime, he's had nothing but bad intentions on his part and he was not going to just hang out despite his pleas that he was just going to hang out with a 13 year old girl. It wasn't going to happen. So, but even though he wasn't charged with a sex crime, I think they were right to feature him is what I'm trying to say. Um, and but it, 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 I wonder though if he didn't act like such an asshole, and if he was if he didn't have a complete meltdown when he found out that he was on on camera, would they have featured him? I don't know. I I think they probably wouldn't have. I think HVP they were so starved for content at this point. They didn't feature the sobbing cowboy uh, Vincent Ambrosio during the original go around. Um, it took until, you know, Chris Hansen needed a quick buck before uh, they finally showed that footage. And they also didn't show David T, uh, Tarolo, whatever his stupid name is, and Charles Lawrence bounced in an instant. Uh, same thing with Mike Manzi. So they were kind of running low on content, so they featured Mike Manzi. So if he didn't act like such an ass, I don't think he wouldn't have been featured. But he, despite his pleas of no malintent, <laughs> He, he definitely had bad things on the mind here. So let's get into it. Uh, all right, let's go. Guy wants to spend and also, before we start, actually, <laughs> I like to just bring this up. Because whenever I think of this egghead, I, it makes me, it allows me to think of one of the best moments in Always Sunny in Philadelphia history right here. Egg. Egg. <laughs> so that is, that is um, Mike Manzi. Egg. All right, let's get into it. Sunday Oops. afternoon, chilling with a 13-year-old girl after texting her about getting stoned. But Mike Manzi's date is about to go up in smoke. You'll be shocked when you hear what Manzi does for a living. <laughs> like they're they're so over the top in Crime Watch Daily, man. Is Crime Watch Daily even still around? I don't think they are. Um, <laughs> they were really over the top during this. I don't care for their production and pr uh, production decisions that they made during this series. That's just me, though. And it's a little cheesy, which I kind of appreciate, but it's like, come on, give me a break. Death tutor. You heard it right. He teaches some of New York and Connecticut's wealthiest children how to solve complicated <laughs> equations. But you might say Manji flunked basic arithmetic because 32 plus 13 adds up to... <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to be this guy. I wish I could have been this guy here that has to, that got to write this on the on the whiteboard. I wanted to be the guy that wrote that. <laughs> like that's probably the easiest money that whoever was doing that probably made right there. But anyways, so yeah, he's from Harrison, New York. At the time of this, he's from Harrison, New York, rich ass town, and it's only. It's probably like two or three towns away from where I currently live. So if I ever ran into Mike Manzi, holy shit, that would be the best thing ever. I completely forgot that he was from Harrison until I rewatched all of these. And yeah, he fucking right down the road from where I live. So would have been really interesting to ever see this guy in public. Oh man, I would. I don't know how I would react. I would go up to him, shake his hand, say, you're Mike Manzi. And he'd be like, no, I'm not. Yes, I, yes, you are. <laughs> 
But yes, Harrison is a very wealthy town. Um, so this guy, he probably made decent money right now doing this. And he probably got a lot of action. <laughs> not going to say it. Online, he calls himself Mike Thrilla. Mike He's Thrilla. He's an employed tutor with a bachelor's degree in mathematics from a small New York college. He's obsessed with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> He's obsessed with pizza. Is that like a real fucking thing? Can someone be obsessed with pizza? Holy shit. No, he, he he should go, since he's in Fairfield anyway, he should go to Planet Pizza. I hear really good things about it. Um, you can get a small, That's you can get a large, that's not even as, it's, that's much larger than the small, but you can get it for like $2 more. So definitely go with the large. Wanna offer this is the Sting House set up in Fairfield, Connecticut, an upscale town on Connecticut's Gold Coast, about 50 miles from Manhattan. The watchdog group Tetrid Corps is working with the Fairfield cops to bust adult men looking to spend time with 12 and 13 year old children. Inside and outside, we've set up more than a dozen hidden cameras, and in our virtual <sighs> control room, Tetrid's operatives. Bulletproof Lori. I love bulletproof Lori. People are always like, oh, is the, is the bulletproof vest actually necessary? Um, yeah, I mean, it's maybe unnecessary, but the reason why she wore the bulletproof vest, in case you want to know, uh, they were, they heard shots, I think, at one point during this thing. They did hear shots on the street. And John Dupay's sister, who drove him to the Sting House, if you recall, and also is now dead, <laughs> came back because they, she hadn't heard from John Dupay after he'd been arrested. So she came to the house to make sure that things were going, going, everything was okay. And so she showed up to the house, and John Dupay wasn't there, obviously. So, but they were like kind of freaked out. That, oh shit, someone's coming to the house. So. Not taking any chances. Apparently, she does have a couple of kids also. So I kind of understand what happened, why they would do that. Uh, it, it, it might be a little ridiculous looking, but I mean, I'm not going to judge Bulletproof Lori. Bulletproof Lori is, uh, she is quite attractive, actually, I think. Can I say, uh, where the hell's a picture of her? Room, Tetris operative. I mean, she has, I mean, maybe not right in that shot, but I think Are I've seen the different pictures of her. She is quite, I think, I think she is quite attractive. With Manzi. Any update on Mike? Uh, Mike's supposed to be on the way. These are some of the texts. <laughs> Mike Thrilla sent to our Look at this fucking idiot. Hang on. Oh my god. Did you blaze? Did you blaze? You're my soulmate. You're so cute. You look way older, by the way. <laughs> but he also admits he shouldn't be talking to a 13 year old. Well, you were cool and cute, too. I just know I could get in trouble even talking to you, you know? But Manzi continues texting. He later appears to become suspicious and asks... Look at that old school Android. Did you see that? That's what the Androids used to look like. If you kids maybe not know that, but this is what Androids used to look like right here. Yeah, that's those stupid bottom bar. Custom yeah, those were the days, man. ...with his name on it. His fears that the girl isn't real are apparently... Look at these conversations. I know, but my side looks like this. What the fuck? Hang on, go back. His I know, but my side looks like this. Oh, well, not tired, just I look like me and you look... What? What the fuck? Not tired, just I look like me and you look like... I look not tired, I look like me. Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> he say, I think, I might, is he saying that he's ugly right there? I don't know. Who knows? Fears that the girl isn't real are apparently quashed. The date is set, and on a crisp autumn day... Manzi arrived at Look at this out. fucking guy. I hate this guy. Like, even if I, even if he wasn't on this, I would hate this guy. I just know that I would hate this guy. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he's, he's awful. He is awful. He's a complete douchebag. I would, uh, never want to look. I would hate this guy. I don't like him. Hello? Good. How are you? Good. How are you? Yes, I did. Sorry, I'm being like a little. No, sorry. This is like weird. Well, it's not. It's not so much that it's weird. It's well. Like, I, 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 <laughs> Do you mind if I look around? Yeah, that's creepy as hell. You should never come into someone's house. No, oh, can I just look around a little bit? And, and then there was Nelly's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> 
right. <laughs> I love this right here. In case you guys never have seen it, uh, hang on, let me pull it up. Uh, there's this YouTube, there's a video on YouTube um, that's really fucking funny <laughs> of Mike Manzi's execution. And it, this is a, this is one of my favorite parts of that video. Um, is right there. Hang on, let me see if I can pull it up here. I'm not gonna play it. You guys can go do that on your own. But yeah, this video right here. Uh, I want to just give it a shout out because it's fucking hilarious. Mike Manzi's execution. What the fuck is happening? Michael Manzi's execution. Doctor Julian again, of course. He's uh, you know, there's a running theme is that the best tcapists, you know, the most funny videos, are by. Dr. Julian. But yeah, definitely take a look at this if you ever, if you want to see something funny. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Right behind that curtain. Mike Manzi is a math tutor. A smart guy who suspected something seemed weird in our sting house. Look at this guy. He looks like a fucking penis, man. Look at this guy. He looks... Suspected something seemed weird in our sting house. Look at this guy. I fucking hate this guy. Um, yeah, if you... He's got some things going for him here. Uh, he knows that he's bald, so he just shaves his head. Uh, that is a good move. I agree with that. That is a good move. Uh, instead of trying to pull the Lord Armstrong where you just have the fucking hair on the sides only, just trying to preserve hair for whatever reason. I don't know why you would ever do that, but... Yeah, if you want, uh, this is, at least is a good move. But then you can't, you have to have facial hair, I think. And he, you have to have facial hair to be able to pull that off. And he doesn't have facial hair. He also doesn't have, doesn't look like he has eyebrows. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's like, he, he does look better. I will admit, I'm going to show you guys something right now. Uh, this is from Michael Manzi's Facebook that someone in the community found. And this is, this is a teenage Michael Manzi. <laughs> so he, I think, is justified. He definitely did have an obsession with pizza. <laughs> this is him probably as a teenager. I don't know how old he is here, but this is a picture of him. You can tell that it's kind of him. It looks like him. He's very overweight. It's like, he had a choice. He could either be overweight, obese, or he could be bald. Not both, though. He couldn't be skinny, and he couldn't have a full head of hair. But he, so he couldn't have both. So he chose skinny, and then he, was, he lost his hair. There are pictures of this guy. You can, If you search, you can find some public pictures of him. Uh, here's another one that I just found as I was looking for this one. Uh, this is supposed to be him sometime in the, in the before the sting. He looks a little bit different, but not really. He still has his signature egg look going on. Uh, what the fuck? Come on here. All right, give me a second. All right, well, I can't get it to fucking pop up, but you can see it right here. This is him at some point in his life. Uh, yeah, so I, I can't get it into full screen for whatever reason my fucking extension isn't working. But yeah, this is him also. It looks like he's got suspenders on and a bow tie because he would be that guy. Fucking asshole. All right, let's continue. Uh, let's continue. Nope. But he never calculated that I, and I hate his outfit. Did I say that already? <laughs> this is the last day of the sting, too. So Nervous Nelly's a little bit excited. She likes smiling. Look at that. You're not select Nervous Nelly. We can swatch that again. But he never calculated that I would be the one behind the curtain. You're not slick. <laughs> Look at her. She's smiling the whole time. Like, oh, you're in for a treat. Yeah, she, that's, that's, that is pretty funny, though. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. I'm good. Good. Would you have a seat right on that stool, please? Sure. No, right here, sir. No, I, I know. Please, right there. What a dickhead, man. And he doesn't even sit down. So disrespectful. Okay. And now he I finally does, but then he's standing back up. Well, what are you doing here? Well, I'm I'm here because I was slightly concerned. Slightly concerned. concerned. About well, concerned because she's talking to people that are a lot younger, a lot older on the website. No, I hate concerned. I hate his fucking voice. He reminds me of somebody that I grew up with uh, from my youth. Uh, the older brother of one of my best friends. He was just a complete fucking dickhead, and he would always grill us whenever we were going anywhere. He'd be like, 
he sounded exactly he sounded exactly like this fucking guy right here and similar voice you know and similar voice and he was just a bitch about everything instead of just letting us be kids he'd be like oh well, you guys aren't going to get into any trouble are you like shut the fuck up just let us live dude and it's like exactly like this guy and i fucking hated the i fucking hated him and that's probably why another reason why i fucking hate this guy but i hate his fucking outfit man i really do ah how are you so concerned about a 13 year old girl well well she's talking to other people that are obviously the same age as me and how old are you i'm 32. you're 32. yes so you came over to make sure she was okay well i came over just to make sure that everything was fine everything was okay i was not so you were going to search the house just now to make sure what well Bad guys I here? well i mean i don't know i can she could come she could be here with a group of people for all i know and she obviously was yeah he thinks he's fucking slick right there like yeah i see i was right i was right see i, I, I was right like yeah no but uh, he, he's like he's like vindicated he'll do this multiple times during this and um yeah I, he's fucking asshole uh he is yeah he's like so arrogant and he's like not as air i don't know if he's more arrogant than jeff sokol because jeff sokol was just denying denying didn't even feel really anything about it but this guy at least he knows that he kind of fucked up towards the end <laughs> but he's going to be screwed but yeah, he, at this point anyway, he's just very arrogant to Chris Hansen. I mean, don't you think? Don't what? you think that would be like a safe idea? Safe idea? What was today's lesson supposed to be? Today, today's lesson for me? Today's <laughs> lesson for you. Today's lesson for me was to not, unfortunately, really worry about other people. No, you're a tutor. Yeah, you shouldn't worry about other people. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's... Just trying to cover his ass right there. He's like, uh, that's the whole thing. I've been inconvenienced by coming here because now, obviously, it wasn't actually a thing. And this is what I get for trying to care about other people. Like, no, you came here. You know why you came here. Shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. And who do you tutor? I tutor. I tutor our, our, these, these ages, older and ages. What do you tutor them in? Um, mathematics. Mathematics. Mm -hmm. What mathematics so let me talk about math right here this guy tutoring probably 13 and up i guess i don't fucking know but he's probably teaching them foil dude do you remember foil dude that shit was awesome i used to love that um that was when i was a <laughs> that's when i really started getting into this mathematics yeah foil was fucking cool man you know first outers inners last i still remember the fucking pattern that i used to do you know I used to draw on my paper um, and so, yeah, he, he probably, probably taught people FOIL. And they probably have changed FOIL. They probably don't even teach FOIL anymore with all this stupid Common Core shit. I'm glad I'm done with school after that shit started. Uh, smoking marijuana. Well, I mean, it's not really something that I try to tutor people in, but well, still. it seems like it's in the chat there. <laughs> all I can do is give a nervous laugh. What a piece of shit. I just know I could get in trouble even talking to you, you know. Well, yes, of course, but you know, look, may I please leave? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I have some more questions for you. Will I be able to leave after your question? Did you blaze? Wait. Yes, sir. Yes. Do you blaze? See, he reminds me. There was another kid from my youth. Uh, we used to call him Frankie Blaze. <laughs> he was like the one of the local uh, marijuana dealers. So he would, we call him Frankie Blaze. Yo, I need to hit up Frankie Blaze. I don't know whatever happened to Frankie Blaze. Answer me, are you reading stuff? Yes, you can read after I ask you a couple questions. Are you sure? Are there police outside or anything? I'll get to that. Please, sir. <laughs> I really can't. Oh, right. So what it looks like, Mike, is that you came here mm -hmm. to smoke weed with a 13-year-old girl, and then whatever was going to happen was going to happen. Yeah, but that's not entirely what was going well, on. Explain it to me. I just told you I was coming here to make sure everything was okay. Right. It Did really you... wasn't that far. I wanted to make sure that there was no, no like sh obviously like she invited me in and there were not. So you were just being a good submit. <laughs> well, I was trying to to a certain extent, but like. So we had in this thing we had Stephen Buchanan who was the welcome wagon <laughs> in Fairfield, and now this guy, he's the good Samaritan of Fairfield. You know, I was coming here to, to make Both sure of them that. terrible excuses. It was okay. 13 year old I deal, girl. I deal with kids all the time. Right. Would you think that the parents of the kids you tutor 
would be comfortable with you coming to visit a 13 year old girl after talking about smoking marijuana and hanging probably out? Not. Probably right. not. Probably not. Right. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. He, oh, shit. Sir, he didn't question? say anything. Oh, come First on. What the fuck is happening is with this? Why is this, this shit going so slow? Give me a second. Okay, so yeah, he was fucking smart, at least smart in parentheses, because he's still fucking, uh, or I guess quotes, because he didn't fucking say anything sexual, he was still stupid enough to show up, so he, he's smarter than the average predator, because he knew not to say anything sexual, and Chris Hansen has nothing else to go off of in this chat log, except for the marijuana, the weed, uh, did you bring the green? <laughs> uh... He has nothing really to go off of except for the harp on the marijuana thing, which is whatever. I mean, like, I mean, I'm not, I don't really do that, but I don't really judge people who do that. I mean, if you want to do it, go, go, go for it, but whatever. It's not like it's the end of the world. I mean, sure, it's a, to a 13 year old, but it, you, would, you would smoke up a 13 year old, but I mean, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't seem like much of a difference to me. I mean, yeah, I mean, you don't want to smoke up a 13-year-old, but, I mean, come on, it's just marijuana. It's not the end of the world. I really don't want to answer any more questions. And I feel do you have marijuana with you? No, I do not. Is it in your car? No, it is not. Then why did you say you were going to come over here and blaze? What's I the lighter for? A, I smoke cigarettes in my car. Again, you see how this looks. I know how it looks, and I'm a sorry. A 32-year-old guy, guy who deals with kids all the time, comes over to visit a 13-year-old girl who's alone after a discussion about smoking marijuana together. All right, we're about halfway done. I'm going to split this into two parts, so I'll see you guys in part two.